Howdy guys, IndyPixel here, and in this video we are going to go through the process of learning how to detect curvature, and more specifically curvature along roads. So I want to be able to find the outside and inside turns so I can place things. Uh, specifically in this example I'm placing the guard rails here on the outside of the turn and these signs on the inside of the turn. And this is really useful because now uh, we have a full procedural system in terms of uh, placing these things along the appropriate part of the road. So as the road changes and the curvature changes, you can see that um, the guardrails are updating and the sign placement is updating. And so really crucial procedural modeling tip to uh, to learn when you're making stuff for like Houdini engine and stuff like that. So uh, with that, let's actually take a look at how you hook this up. All right, let's kick this off by dropping down a geometry node and I'm gonna call this uh, finding uh, curvature like so. I'm going to hit enter to dive inside and then I'm going to go and create a curve. Now this curve will give us basically the the basis for which we want to uh, find the curvature for. It's something like you know when you're working on roads and stuff like that in Houdini. Uh, this is very very handy. So just created a curve, turn on grid snapping and just a really rough curve just to test this out. I'm going to hit escape to get out of edit mode there. I'm going to drop down a resample node and we are then going to resample this uh, at a length of one and i'm going to set this to subdivision curves just to make it a little bit smoother something more road like like so and then i'm going to go and add my curve directions to this so if you haven't seen the uh, other video about hooking up curve directions i highly recommend you watch it because um, i'm just going to use my preset for this i really just want to cover finding curvature in this particular video all right, so I'm going to select my preset. You can also pause the video and copy it from there. With that done, I'm going to drop down a sweep node. And we are going to set this guy to um, the ribbon for the server shape. And I'm going to set the width to something like four. And I'm going to set my columns uh, to one. Now, you're going to notice that the sweep node is going to produce some really wonky um, geometry there. And that's because our curvatures aren't actually producing any um, proper directions. And that's because in the resample node, we need to go and um, turn on the tangent attribute and our curve view attribute. I'm going to go and change the tangent U attribute name to a capital N. And what that does is it actually produces flow normals or normals that follow the direction of the curve. So currently it's really hard to see. If you hit D on the keyboard, we can go into the guides here and increase our normal. You can see that uh, we're getting these flow normals here. Uh, you can make it even easier to see if you drop down an add note. And we feed that guy in there like so. And we just say delete geometry, we keep the points, turn on the blue display flag. Now you can see the normals for each one of those points there. So it's pointing in the direction that the curve is flowing, basically. So let's get rid of this add node here. And now we have uh, some geometry uh, to work with. So this is great. So what I'm going to do is just pump this guy over here and we'll just say, you know, something like out road. Cool. At this point, now all we want to do is drop down a measure node and just take a look at, you know, the basics of uh, producing curvature here. So I'm going to put in the measure node there and we're going to set this to element type of points. This is very important for this particular technique here to find the curvature. We're going to then set the measure to curvature and I always use the Gaussian uh, filter there. And so now to view the actual results here, uh, I just hit enter with the measure node selected and you can see that we're getting red for the outside and blue for the inside. So really, really cool way of quickly getting um, curvature, especially when you're working on things like roads. Uh, you'll notice that we're actually getting red though at the ends here, so we're going to have to write a little bit of uh, Vexco to uh, take care of that particular thing, so uh, let's keep moving forward. Now that we've got our curvature value, uh, we can actually start to work with that value. So just so you know, the attribute is called curvature, and you can see if you have the geometry spreadsheet open over here, that it has put that attribute onto each one of those points. All right, so that's what we're viewing right here. So I'm going to actually hit escape over here in the scene view to get out of the edit mode for the measure node there. And I want to split this up now into two curves. So I'm going to use the add node for that. I'm going to delete geometry, keep points, go to by group, and we'll say skip every nth point. Now you can also get, you know, the um, horizontal curves, if you will, uh, if you do groups of end points. So in this case, I, I want to put stuff on the outsides of the uh, road here. And um, yeah, so I want these particular curves like so. So we can now go and uh, visualize this ourselves. Drop down a wrangle node. I'm just going to call this uh, curvature colors like so. And 
we are going to go and assign our own colors to these. So let's go and uh, write a little bit of code here. So I'm going to say at CD, which is just the attribute for color, is equal to zero. So you can just uh, set it to black by default. And uh, then I'm going to do uh, if that curvature, so we say f at curvature, like so. If that curvature value is greater than zero, then I want to set it to red. So I'm going to say at CD is equal to uh, 100 or red RGB, right? So there you go. So now you can start to see we're, we're getting some colors now for the outside turns, which is super cool. So I'm just going to copy this little snippet of code here. And we're going to paste this. So I'm going to say if you're less than zero, then we are going to be green, like so. All right, so now we've got all of our coverage colors. Super cool. Uh, we also do, do need to take care of these um, little end pieces here. Uh, so let's do that up here. Uh, here's a really slick way to do this. Uh, I'm going to do... So what, basically, my goal is to find these points first. Now, there's something very unique about these particular points. Let me actually uh, comment this out up here. There's something unique about these particular points is that they only have one neighbor, right? A neighbor being a neighboring point that they're connected to. If you look at every other single point here, it has two neighbors next to it. So we can actually look for that, and that's what I'm going to do here. So we're going to just do int uh, num nays. Now, that's just a variable name. I'm assigning it. You can call it whatever you want. And we want to use that neighbor count effects function there. We want to get the information from the first input there, or this guy right here. And we want to do at pt num for the point number. There you go. All right, so if our num nays is equal to one, all right, that means we only have one neighbor, I'm going to just put your curvature value to zero. There you go, so now it's just black. All right, beautiful. So with that done, uh, now I want to be able to determine like how much of the actual inside and outside curve I want to keep. All right, so to do this, I need to convert this to uh, line or use the convert line node. Uh, I don't need the rest length attribute. I tend to turn it off just so I don't um, have a lot of attributes in my geometry spreadsheet. You can leave it on if you want though. So uh, I'm going to do attribute promote now. So um, we are going to then go from points to primitive. So I want to take that curvature attribute from the point and put it onto the primitive. That way I can then feed that into a uh, wrangle node and remove stuff based off of some rules, right? So I'm going to do attribute wrangle node. And we are going to then go and rename this to say remove prims, like so. Because that's exactly what I want to do in this wrangle node. And then I want to go and find, or I want to create a new um, parameter here called min curvature. So let's just create a new variable first and then do a channel float or float channel. We'll call this min curvature as well. That's just for the label. There we go. And I'm going to hit this little button right here to actually expose it. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to say if the um, absolute value, let's put that inside the parentheses here. So we're gonna, if the absolute value of f at curvature is uh, less than the min curvature, then we want to remove the primitive. So we're going to say remove prim and zero for the first input uh, at prim num for the prim number and one to remove all the associated points. All right, so now nothing's going to happen because we have our main curvature set to uh, zero here. So we just increase this slider right here and we can start to remove stuff. So you can see if we were to template our road piece here, now we're getting just the portions where we want to start placing assets. So if this were like a racetrack, you know, you'd have like the bumpers on the inside and you'd have, you know, the guardrails or, you know, a fence or something like that on the outside. All right, cool. So uh, remember, currently these particular curves are still um, all separated out. So we need to fuse these guys back together. So let's do a fuse. And polypath, it's a good technique right there to get your curves back into a single curve. So now when I turn on the display flag, you can see that we have single primitives here. Perfect. At this point, we pretty much have all the data that we need, um, except for all of our directions. So we need to go and produce all of our normal directions. Uh, so we have, you know, the flow of the, the curve uh, from the original curve that indicates the direction of the road, and then also all the um, directions that face outwards from the road as well, so we can place stuff out there. All right, so let's take care of that. Let's do um, this here. And what 
we need to do actually to do this appropriately is we need to assign the original primitive uh, number to this. So if we come all the way back up to the top here to our add node um, and we turn on our prim numbers, you can see that we have the zero and one. Well, we need to actually uh, record that or at least stash it somewhere. So I'm going to go and drop down a wrangle node and I'm going to call this uh, set ID. And uh, to do this, I'm just going to run over the primitives and say I at ID. So we're going to make a new integer attribute that will live on the, the points itself. So you'll be able to see in the geometry spreadsheet. And I'm going to give it the uh, prim num. And we're going to yeah leave it on the, um, the primitives there. Cool. So with that done, and we actually need to spell this correctly. So prim num. There we go. Cool. So now that we've got that on the primitives, we need to promote it down to the points because it'll get uh, destroyed when it goes through this convert line node. And so we just do an attribute promote here, drop that down like so. And we'll say we want to go from primitives to point and we want to transfer that or promote that ID attribute. So if we pump that through and go down to our last node here, the split node, you can see that this ID is now on the points and it survived um, all this processing right here. Cool. So now we can split on that. So I can say um, if the ID here is equal to zero, so we're going to say at ID is equal to zero, and we need to set that to points. So there you go. So we've got one half on one side and the other half on the other side. So now we need to develop our normals, the ones that are facing away from each other. So I always call these the uh, away facing normals, like so. And I'm going to pump that guy into there. And this is actually relatively simple to do. We just need to get the position from the other uh, side, right? If I were to drop down a null node over here and um, take a look at the point numbers over here. So let's turn on our point numbers here really quick. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 18 there. And we have the same ordering and the sorting over here on the same side. So that, way, that is why this is going to basically work because I can just grab the position from the other side. So I'm going to call this other pause. And this is going to be equal to point and one for the second incoming geometry there. I want to get the uh, P attribute, the position attribute, and we want to do at PT num because the point numbers match on both sides. All right, and we need to make sure that we spell correctly. There we go. And then finally, we're going to say at N is equal to normalize. We're going to normalize the vector that is created by subtracting the current position of the point from the other position. So we say other pause. And there you go. So now we have normals that are facing outwards. And if we were just duplicate this by holding down alt and left clicking and dragging, and then I'm going to hold down Y on the keyboard to cut the wires. And if we just swap the inputs here, we now have the uh, opposite effect. So we can just grab these two guys and then hold down alt left click and drag to create a merge node. And you can see now we have the normals pointing outwards like so. This is really useful because then what we can do is we can use a peak node here, turn off the recompute point normals, and this allows us to then peak it outwards from the road. So we can place stuff out there. Very cool. All right, so with that, we also need to produce uh, the flow normal. And that's uh, relatively simple as well because we actually get that value up here. So this is coming in from there. So if I turn on my normals, you can see that we actually have the flow normal up here. And so really in this uh, curve DERS, let's actually put in a new vector attribute called forward. So V at F W D for forward. And that's equal to at N for now. So I'm just stashing it on the points there. And basically the reason why I did that is because now they actually survive um, all the way through the graph. Right. So I have this forward um, vector here and we can actually uh, visualize that. So if I were to drop down uh, visualize node by hitting X on the keyboard, we can go and visualize this guy. So we can go and set the class to point and we're going to look at the forward attribute. It needs to be type of marker and a vector for the style. And you can see that we now have our uh, flow normal, All right? So we know that uh, both sides are flowing in the same direction. It's just that this is the outside turn and that's the inside turn. Cool. So now we've got all the, that information all set. Uh, let's just split it out into outside and inside curves there. And uh, to do that, I'm going to do at cd.r is uh, greater than zero and set this to uh, points. And that leaves me with just the outside turn. So you can drop down a null node here and we'll say outside uh, curves and 
Inside curves. And there you go. So let's just uh, merge these guys together. There we go. And uh, let's put down the color for this so it's more like road-like here. And we'll just do something like a dark color here. And just template that by holding down control and hitting the template flag. And then just hitting the display flag. And now you can see if I turn off all my components here, we have the inside and outside curves. So that's how you find curvature. Really useful technique for procedural modeling. I use it uh, quite often. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Thanks so much.